These videos are educational in nature and are designed to help people over 21 who smoke cigarettes switch to a less harmful alternative. You guys, I, I can't even begin to explain to you how completely like humiliating this is and how foolish I feel. I broke my hand because I punched a wall. They call it a boxer's fracture, but apparently boxers never get this because boxers actually know how to throw a punch. I, on the other hand, do not. I've never been in a fight in my entire life. I've never been in an altercation. I've never swung my fist at somebody, at a human, with the intention of hurting them. But occasionally, I, I can punch a wall, apparently. And I don't know my own strength because it broke my hand. Here's the thing, I'm, I'm mostly blaming stress and YouTube for this broken hand. I had a really great beginning of 2022. In August, I went on my little uh, summer of Nick vacation where I kind of, you know, regroup, re recharge, my, recharge my batteries, come back strong, finish the year strong. It's something I like to do every single year. And I came back feeling really strong from this year's summer of Nick vacation. And, and then I got a strike and then I got another strike on YouTube and then I was dealing with YouTube stress and then I got my third strike and I got my channel taken away and then I had to get my channel reinstated and I spent all this time like dealing with YouTube and suddenly pivoting and being like, okay, well, we're gonna stream on, on Twitch now. I'm gonna try to build a following on Twitch because YouTube is clearly not cooperating with me, being very openly hostile towards all you know, vaping and harm reduction. So I thought, oh, let's go to Twitch. And then I'm, you know, I'm learning how to do TikToks. I'm 45 years old. I'm an, I'm an aging Gen Xer. I, I got no business doing TikToks. What? I'm trying to learn TikToks and Reels and I'm trying to, you know, the holidays start happening. More stress starts happening. Casey's father has surgery. My father has surgery. I get back home. We're trying to get into Christmas. It was threat level midnight in my brain. It was just trigger stacking and the idea that I had to go to Target sent me over the edge and I just was like ah, fucking <laughs> uh, hey it's editing this guy here I, I just wanted to also interject and say I, I think I'd be deluding myself if I didn't say that some of this was directly related to vape advocacy I get on Twitter and I doom scroll and I and I get mad and I can feel myself getting madder and I go, good, you know, be mad. You should be mad about this. Uh, righteous anger, you know. So I'm doom scrolling and doom scrolling and doom scrolling. And maybe I shouldn't do that every single morning. Maybe that would be something that would help keep my stress levels down. So with that said, I think we're gonna talk about advocacy in a minute. I'm gonna go to Target. So I'm like huffing up the stairs and I'm not excited about it. I'm not excited about going to Target because it's Christmas break and we've just had a stressful second half of the year. And I'm huffing up the stairs and right before I like turn into my bedroom, I, see, I look and I see my wall and I go, I'm gonna punch that wall. And I did. And I gave it this stupid like angsty, like, uh, like uh, just as I turned the corner, I like punched the wall and it was immediate instant regret. It was like punch and then oh fuck, 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 oh fuck. Oh fuck. It Im immediately started bruising. What's going on here? It immediately started bruising. It immediately turned black and blue. I, I was unable to move my pinky or my ring finger. It was bad. And I went and I washed my hands and I was looking at my hand and I thought, man, I think I just broke my hand. This is the single dumbest move I think I've ever done, you know? I, I was upset about, you know, affecting Christmas, and then three days before Christmas, I get to go to the orthopedic surgery center to have my hand looked at because I think I broke it. Dumb, it's just dumb, and I just feel dumb, and I just feel foolish, and, you know, it, my lesson has been learned. Uh, my whole life, growing up, my brother had a nickname for me that was No Fuse Nick. And I had, like the name implies, no fuse. Just literally no fuse. It was nothing. Any little thing could set me off. I had a vivid memory of sitting at the kitchen table with a plate full of food, eating dinner, getting mad at my mom for who knows whatever dumb kid reason, grabbing my full plate of food like a Frisbee and just 
winging it into the kitchen with full force. And then, you know, standing up and storming into my room and slamming the door. Had a short fuse. Had a very short fuse. And it's something I became aware of. And it's something I've been trying to actively fight against literally my entire adult life. And so dumb. I probably won't be able to live stream on Twitch until maybe February. It's, it happened on a Wednesday. So Thursday was my appointment. Thursday was a follow-up. Thursday was another follow-up. Then the next Thursday was like the surgery. Then this Thursday I have to go in. Then next Thursday I have to go in. Then the Thursday after that I have to go in. So needless to say, dumb. My stupid, dumb ape brain punching a wall um, is going to keep me from live streaming in January, unfortunately, on Twitch. And that really bums me out in a severe way. Did I mention how thoroughly, completely foolish I feel? Because it's a lot. The upside is uh, I'm still going to try to do some reviews. We're going to try to do some pod reviews because I feel like I can do those one-handed. In a week or so, I might gain function of these fingers and be able to use them. Maybe I could do a build stream, but I'm still going to try to have a pretty steady flow of content here on YouTube. I just won't be streaming, I don't think, this month. Maybe as we get into February, fingers crossed. Well, not all my fingers crossed, but fingers crossed that we'll be able to stream in February. So, long story short, I'm dumb. And I, and I did a dumb thing, and I, and I punched my dumb hand into the dumb wall and in a like a little male temper tantrum type of way, and I, I get to live with this penance for the whole month. Okay, I think I have a little bit of time left in this video. I wanted to address a few comments from yesterday's Amanda Wheeler PMI video. First things first, Jay Hayes said, bro, I got nothing but love for you, but you wouldn't catch me dead working for tobacco, period. Yeah, same, same on both. I got I got nothing but love for you and, and you wouldn't catch me uh, working for tobacco, period, either. Stu6R said, Amanda has been bought by Big Tobacco. She's smart, as you say, bet she neither smokes nor vapes. Vaping harms also, by the way. Not only does Amanda Wheeler vape, Amanda Wheeler is a cancer survivor. So there you go, Stu6R. Safe mush, you know, he said, I genuinely hope this was a satirical piece. It was not. I'm dead serious about it. Uh, I'm assuming that it upsets you, and, and I I'm, I'm do apologize to you, Safe Mush. That little heart next to your name on the comment means that I consistently like your comments. I see you, Safe Mush, in my comments all the time. Let's have a discussion about it. You know, I'm here for it. I'm here for the discussion. Uh, TV Adan 2586 says, I believe in Amanda Wheeler. I don't believe in PMI. Too many shareholders would decide against discontinuing cigarettes because they are a profit machine. The fiduciary responsibility of PMI would be to continue selling cigs and grow sales everywhere to maximize profits. I have major doubts with a million billion, with a multi-billion dollar corporation suddenly becoming altruistic for the greater good of the planet while simultaneously crippling their own business model. I don't believe that they've suddenly become altruistic. I believe that they want to make money and they know that cigarettes are gone. They are out. They are on their way out. It is in PMI's fiscal interests to pivot away from combustible tobacco cigarettes. I don't think they could force the sale of cigarettes even if they wanted to. In the United States alone, Upwards of 13 million people have quit smoking cigarettes. I guarantee you Big Tobacco has felt that and gone, where are our customers going? Oh, they're vaping. Okay, let's sell them that instead. Again, I don't think they're being the good guys. Maybe they are, I don't know. I don't think they're being the good guys. I think they like making money and I think they like also not killing their customers. Think about a nicotine customer who isn't going to contract lung cancer or emphysema like 15 years into their habit, Big Tobacco could have a nicotine customer that will live out the rest of their lives, live out the rest of their days being a consistent customer. That's like the ultimate customer. It makes 
so much more sense for them to pivot to harm reduction than to continue selling tobacco cigarettes. Uh, Greg C3362 uh, chimed in as well and said, well said, how can you trust a big tobacco company that makes billions and billions off of a product and then expect them to just stop making that exact product? Easy, if the demand for that exact product suddenly disappears. If people start switching from cigarettes to vaping, that's called product substitution, and the demand for the original product goes way, way, way down. Big Tobacco has to maintain their margins, so when one goes way, way, way down, they're gonna look at what's going way, way, way up and invest in that. I feel like I'm just explaining businesses and capitalism a lot right now. If you think I'm way off base, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm here for the conversation. Leave a comment down below. I don't know why it's okay for vapors to make money off of THR, tobacco harm reduction, but it's not okay if Big Tobacco wants to stop selling cigarettes and get into the tobacco harm reduction business. That doesn't make a lick of sense to me. I, I've said this before in the past, but the market wants what the market wants. And for many, many years, the vape market was all RDAs and mechs and, you know, things like that. And I understand that people are sad that that's not like the big thing anymore, that there's no more V-God trick comps or giant vape shows or anything like that. But the original goal of this technology is to help smokers quit. And my original goal of this YouTube is to help smokers quit. I started off this channel with Sigalikes and pen style devices and little 510 weird ego batteries. And as the technology evolved, we just used every tool in the arsenal. Oh, you don't like a pod? Maybe you'll like this. Oh, you don't like this? Maybe you'll like an RDA. You don't like an RDA? You might like an RTA. You don't like that? You don't like that. Variety is the spice of life and we can't force people to use the products that we like. And you know, I will always support them and always review them. It's my preferred way to vape. I will always suggest them to people who are using a pod or using a disposable, but that, that critical first step of getting someone to switch, that's the most important part. And once they cross that threshold, then we welcome them into, to, into whatever else type of things they wanna vape. They can vape pods if they're done with disposables. Oh, you're done with pods? Check this out. You can rebuild your own shit. Crackly, RDA. There are uh, um, uh, just so many different ways to vape that I feel like gatekeeping any of it uh, is detrimental. I mean, not just to our industry, but to public health in general. For the record, I do uh, really like this UL Crown pod that I opened. Quite good. I guess since I suddenly switched topics, that means it's the end of the video. Let me know down in the comments below, agree or disagree. I would like to hear from you because I am here for the conversation. This has been a Grim Green video. Let's stay smoke free, you know, every single day. <coughs> it's like 10.30 and I'm uh, just gonna smoke, so.